So we're at the South Broadway Cultural Center. It's February 4th, 2016. Um, I think it's the third. February 3rd, <laughs> 2016. <laughs> um, I am Mara Gadimi interviewing Stan Honda. Okay. Yes. So first question, um, can you tell me about your experience growing up in the 60s and 70s as a Japanese American? Okay, I grew up in San Diego as a third generation Japanese American. And uh, let's see, we lived in the central part of San Diego, and uh, I suppose looking back, it was probably a unique experience. Probably that, that a lot of children of well, I was a, I, I was actually the grandchild of, of immigrants, and uh, so we kind of lived in the world around us, but also uh, lived in partly a Jap Japanese world where my mother would cook Japanese food and. We went to a, a Japanese American Buddhist church in San Diego, so I had I had some Japanese American friends from there, and then but then the area we lived in was uh, mainly working class whites, some Hispanics and blacks, so sort of a mixed area of San Diego. Uh, so it was it was uh, interesting, I think, growing up with these two with these two worlds, straddling the two worlds really, and in. Uh, yeah, San Diego was, uh, I, I, I like living there. And eventually, I think I'd like to move back. It's, it's a nice place. The climate itself is pretty good. And, uh, war, war, a little bit warmer than, <laughs> than New York, where I live right now. Okay, thank you. Um, can you talk a little bit about your photography background? Oh, sure, yeah. Yes, I started photography in, uh, really in high school. I, I started just shooting pictures and then worked a little bit for the, the, the high school newspaper. And uh, I took some classes in photography during the summer just to learn things about developing film and making prints. And then uh, I went to UC San Diego for college. It, there's no photography major there. I mean, no journalism major there. They had, their photography was a little bit more toward art. I was interested more in the, in the journalism part. And I started working for the campus newspaper there. And I learned quite a bit there. There were other some other photographers, but also other other uh, journalists, writers who uh, were ba basically were teaching ourselves uh, how to put together a newspaper. And after that, I got a, a job at uh, uh, jobs at some of the smaller newspapers in San Diego, and worked my way up to the uh, the bigger newspapers, um, the Union Tribune in San Diego and the Los Angeles Times. So the uh, for for about 34 years, I was I did photojournalism full time. Uh, in 1989, I moved out to New York City with my wife. I had uh, gotten a job at Newsday, which is a big newspaper uh, in, on Long Island. They had a New York City edition at the time, which, which I started working, working for. Uh, and then uh, in 1995, they closed the edition, so I started to do freelance work in, in, in New York City for about seven and a half years, and I did a lot of work for different newspapers, out-of-town newspapers uh, that weren't in, in New York and some magazines. And also for Agency France Press, which is the, the French news service. It's they're the French equivalent of the AP. And then in 2003, they, the AFP hired me full-time as a staff photographer in the US. And I worked out of the New York City Bureau with two other photographers, two other staff photographers. So uh, we would cover all sorts of uh, news events, business, and sports, and pretty big events, uh, presidential inaugurations and campaigns. And I went to Iraq twice uh, in 2003 and 2004, and uh, covered a little bit of the uh, Obama's first presidential campaign, and then the inauguration uh, in Washington D.C. So that was a pretty historic event to, to cover. And I went was in Haiti for the earthquake in 2010, and the World, uh, World Cup soccer I went to um, South Africa in 2010. So that was, I'd never been to South Africa, so that was a, that was an in interesting trip. Um, you've done a lot of really drastically different projects. Yeah. Um, what do you think you're most proud of? Um, let's see, probably, uh, uh, since my background is Japanese American, I was really interested in the whole Japanese ex American experience. And I've done several personal projects about about the camps and the, the, the incarceration on on di different different topics and different people. Uh, my 
I think my sisters and I were pretty fortunate where my parents and aunts and uncles talked a lot about their experiences in the, in the camp being incarcerated during the war, which is sort of unusual among my generation of, of Japanese Americans. So a lot of, uh, I know uh, other third generation uh, children whose parents rarely talked about the camp, so they, they knew very little of the personal experiences. So uh, we were pretty fortunate, so I think because because we already knew a lot, and we didn't—it's not really taught very much in schools, even even now. Definitely not when I was going to school. Uh, so I think my interest as a photographer, I felt that I could I could document these experiences and try to try to uh, show these experiences to to other people. And so over the years, I've been able to do a, a, a couple of different things, uh, including once my old sister and I, for over a period of, of a few years, we wanted to try to visit the site of all the camps, the, the 10 major uh, relocation camps uh, in the, around in the country. We made it to nine of them, so, so that, that was, we thought that was, that was pretty good. Um, did you go to the one where your parents were? Yeah, uh, they were both held in a, a place called Poston in, in Arizona. Uh, my parents didn't know each other, but the, the, the families just happened to end up in the, in the same camp. They met after the war mm -hmm. in San Diego. And so that, um, but they both were were in the same camp. So I think they were telling us of their their experiences there. And we visited the Poston site uh, a few times because they um, they had a couple of trips from with survivors of the pilgrimages there. And then there, there was also one year where a, a memorial was built um, and was dedicated after it was built uh, from funds raised by uh, survivors and, and families and friends. Uh, so we took a, uh, my two sisters and I took a trip out there for the, for the dedication. And then the, the project I'm working on most recently is about the, the barracks at the Heart Mountain, Wyoming camp. Uh, about 20 years ago, the Japanese American National Museum did this really interesting uh, project where they preserved two of the original barracks from the camps and Heart Mountain was interesting because the, a lot of the barracks were, were sold to homesteaders from the area just after the war, around 1947 and 48. And many of the barracks themselves were used as, uh, as homes for the, for the homesteaders. A lot were used as outbuildings in, for ranchers and uh, farmers in the area, mainly farmers. So a lot of the barracks themselves are, uh, hadn't really been altered in any way, and so they, a lot of them look very similar to what they looked like um, in, in 1945 after the war ended. Uh, so the museum had found two barracks that were in fairly good condition and so they wanted to preserve them and take them back to Los Angeles. Uh, so I saw this little ad in the, in the uh, newsletter for the Japanese American National Museum saying that mm -hmm. volunteers were going to Wyoming to, to try to preserve this barrack and I thought well this is something that really has to be documented that I'd like to photograph this whole process because it's, it's really, a barrack is the one artifact from, the, from a camp that everybody had in common. People who were in the camps, they were all in different physical locations, geographical locations, but everybody had to live in one of these barracks and they were fairly standardized uh, across all 10 camps uh, since it was essentially a military project to put together these camps. So they built these very quickly and they were very flimsy, but everybody has their stories about living in the barracks and the, the conditions that, uh, that existed back then. Uh, so it was interesting. My, my wife and I went out to Wyoming and met up with the group and photographed them uh, taking, a, taking the barracks apart. And they had a the museum had hired a preservation, preservationist architect who uh, did this as part of his work and he was able to know how to t basically take apart a building and then put it back together in the same condition. And then about a month later, they all gathered back in Los Angeles at the museum, and in the parking lot, they, they reconstructed one of the barracks. Uh, so I photographed that whole process, and it eventually became um, a, a book uh, called Moving Walls and, and uh, Preserving the Barracks of America's Concentration Camps. So a, a writer named Sharon Yamato, who I met in Wyoming on the original project, she said, I'm writing this book, can we use some of your photos? And, so it turned out to be a, uh, a pretty interesting book. Uh, she wrote about learning more about the camps 
from the people, the volunteers there, because her, her mother rarely spoke about her experiences. So she didn't really know much about people's personal experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that, so that was interesting. And then last, in 2013, Sharon got a grant from the National Park Service. They have a program called the Japanese American Confinement Site uh, Grant Program uh, that issues grants for educational purposes, a lot to institutions, but she put in a grant for essentially to expand the book that we worked on and to do a video documentary, which um, uh, part of what her work is, a, is as a video, uh, as a documentarian. So uh, she's working on that. And we took two trips to Wyoming last year to do research and uh, photograph people, homesteaders who still live in these buildings that used to be barracks from the mm -hmm. camps. So it was interesting to meet the, the white homesteaders who live in the buildings and they, they would show us which part of their house was the original barrack and you kind of get the sense of the shape and all that. So it was yeah. pretty interesting to see that these barracks essentially are being preserved in a, in a way, in this, in this way through a different purpose. Yeah. Um, you answered a few of my questions already. Oh, okay. but, um, so what, what, if any, do you think are the next steps for this project? Uh, let's see, well, Sharon is writing the text for the, uh, the book, and I had just, uh, last month, I had gone through a lot of the pictures, to editing them and, and, and processing them, so I think uh, there's a designer, the, the, the original designer that worked on the book is going to design the, the new book, and so he's familiar with the, with the whole story and with the, with the original photos, so I think it sounds like the first part of the book is going to be the original story and the photos and then the second part will be the new research that Sharon and, and I did in Wyoming. Uh, and so hopefully by, I think we're hoping by the end of, end of this year the, the book will be out and I think the, docu the documentary will probably take uh, l longer than that. Yeah. It's, it's a little bit longer process. But it'd be interesting to, to do that and, uh, and, and maybe try to uh, present it to, a lot, to the people at the Heart Mountain Interpretive Center, which is a me small museum at the site of the Heart Mountain Camp, uh, they have a an annual pilgrimage out there during the summer. So I think it'd be nice to be out there when uh, during the pilgrimage with with the book itself. And the, the people at the museum had been talking about maybe doing a photo exhibit of some of the photos from the uh, from the new work that, mm -hmm. that we were doing. Okay, is there anything <laughs> else you would like to add? Uh, I don't, I, it's it's nice to be in Albuquerque. I, uh, I, I was thinking that with this project, uh, somebody had directed me to the, the JCO group here, saying, "Well, maybe they, they might be interested in in seeing your pictures from the, yeah. the barracks." So so I'm glad I made the contact, and it's, it's we great. are too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's, it's great to be here, and it's, it's uh, the South Broadway Center is I think a good place for the, for a talk like this. Yeah. Okay. Thank is, you. Is that, that good I, I think that's good. <laughs> All right. Okay, so thank okay. you. Okay, <laughs> sure, yeah, thanks.